Hello and welcome to another recap of The Real Housewives of Potomac. We're on Season 5, Episode 12, Fully Charged. So grab a glass of wine with me, or a Whiskey Rocks, or a Diet Coke, or an orange juice, or wheatgrass, whatever you're into, because uh, this is quite an interesting episode. First of all, we're going to have a Nigerian um, an Igbo tribe sip and see, which of course is going to be extra interesting, <laughs> extra over the top. I'm fully here for that. So um, Wendy and Eddie are going to have a Nigerian style sip and see for little Cameron, who is already a little goddess, a little queen. Eddie's family is, as we discussed in a previous episode, very distant from the family and certainly from Wendy's family because basically Wendy's mother is um, a very high level person in the Igbo tribe and Eddie's mother thinks that she's full of herself and cannot stand her. So there was a big falling out, I think between mostly between the two mothers and they didn't approve of the marriage and the um, Eddie's siblings were forced to choose between Eddie and the mother, and of course, this being an African culture, as in most cultures, um, the children are going to side with the mother. So that's a little sad, um, but he's still um, he's still going to try and make an attempt to see if they will come. He's still going to reach out. Okay. Um, Ashley and hopeless husband Michael go to her therapist together. Ash immediately brings up Michael's indiscretion, or should I say plural, indiscretions, and um, she has to remind us about the f fact that in the past they had threesomes, but she doesn't want that to be part of their life anymore, and he says he doesn't necessarily either, but um, she's like, look, now we have a baby, I don't really want that to be, you know, who we are anymore. I want to be a little bit more, I guess, live a more discreet life, um, whatever you want to say. And um, Michael is such a liar. You know, I every time I'm reminded that he said that he fell asleep next to this woman in the cab going to your hotel. Okay, so you're in the cab going to your hotel or in the car going to your hotel, right? Mm, which is enough <laughs> on its own. What are we gonna do, get her a separate room? And then he woke up with her beside him. Yeah, okay, he had too much to drink, blah, blah. Okay, that's a very likely excuse. All right, um, well, Michael is asked, why do you think it happened by the therapist? And he says, look, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. His father sounds like he was a rotten guy. He said that his father put all of his sort of focus on Michael, um, but that focus could turn really ugly. And uh, shortly we'll find out specifically um, how and why that would happen. So he feels a bit isolated. He's like, no one can solve my issues but me, his cheating issues, in other words. Um, he says he's afraid that he needs, kind of, in a sense, needs more love or more attention than one person can provide. And again, that comes from his upbringing. Again, we'll, we'll find out a little bit more shortly. Okay, uh, so Wendy is inviting everyone except Monique. I. I'm sorry, but I, I don't blame her. Um, yeah, Mo Monique uh, will, can eventually be, you know, brought back into the fold, but she does need to show a little bit of, a little bit more remorse, regret, whatever you want to say for, for what went on. Um, and you know, as time goes by, I do think more and more, wow, nobody knows how to instigate like Candace. But again, I'm going to say this for the 500th time, words do not merit laying of hands. They don't merit. <laughs> no, 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 never. Okay, um, Ray and Karen are decorating the house for Halloween. Uh, they go for a little walk and have a little chat together. Of course, Karen's main subject is, you know, why he said that he wasn't sure if he was still in love with her. He said he wasn't sure, not that he wasn't, uh, that he had definitely fallen out of love with her, but that he just didn't feel as solid anymore. Um, Ray feels like her fame and the success that she's had has gone to her head. Um, 
Well, that has to be more about her being on Housewives of Potomac and being a, a kind of a, you know, a celebrity of a certain level. Because again, that perfume is available. Uh, it's not very available. It's mostly available on her website online. So it's not like, it doesn't seem to me like it's just going crazy and setting the world on fire. I wish Karen well with it. I hope it is extremely successful, but it doesn't seem to be soaring to the skies. Let's put it that way. Um, Okay, he says he does feel ignored by her. Um, Karen says, no, nothing has gone to my head. Well, I think Karen already had a big head to begin with, so she's probably telling the truth. Uh, she wants a happy marriage, but Ray has to help. He has to be somewhat invested in it. Okay, now we get to the meat of the episode. Candace has resolved that she is going to press charges against Monique. And not only is she going to press charges against Monique, she's going for second degree felony assault, which is not a joke. Um, she goes in and she's interviewed by someone and the prosecutor feels like there is a case. So they go ahead and they file the charges against one Monique Samuels. Okay. Um, Candace, that's fine, um, but, uh, I th well, I don't think it's fine. I think you're going a little over the top with this um, because second degree felony could result in jail time. And also, um, I need you to admit that you're a major instigator because I haven't heard that from you either. Again, not saying that words deserve fists or whatever else you might use to hurt someone. I'm just saying she does need to work on that because we're gonna see another example in this episode of how much of an instigator that girl can be. She just has this way about her that's just, ah, oh, she's, she's just, she'll just poke the hornets, poke the hornet's nest. She'll, she'll, yeah, she'll just poke it and poke it and poke it until something happens. So, um, but of course I still feel, you know, Monique, absolutely, no. She, not only did she go way over, she was violent, she hurt her and she um, was completely unrepentant afterwards and was kind of turning it into something she was gloating over like, yeah, I won, I'm the victor. That turned me off as much as the physical violence, believe it or not, even though the physical violence was bad. Okay, um, Robin has a cute little baseball cap hat line named um, Embellished which is a cute name. I'm surprised no one's ever taken it for something else. Um, she's got very cute little prints, various little things. And um, it's cute, her sons are helping her kind of pack and ship some of the items. So far she's made $10,000 from the line, which is nothing to sneeze at because I'm sure the, um, the caps are probably not very expensive. And um, she says, uh-oh, Robin says that she's sort of backing off, focusing on marriage and buying the house until the tax problem is over. Oops, I mean, I wonder if Juan knows this because I think he's still out there buying a ring with Giselle. I don't believe he said, no, he did say this is a problem, obviously, but I don't believe he said, no, I don't wanna marry her now. Hope not, bad timing, bad timing. Okay, um, not that there's any good timing to owe $90,000 to the IRS. That's why you gotta be careful, girl, you gotta be careful. God, don't get, if you're making anything, use a CPA. Okay. Um, all right. Candace meets her BFF Cliff and she tells him about filing the charges and um, she had to give a statement on Monique. She says she wants, basically she is saying she wants Monique to get jail time. She wants her to pay for what she did you know, in, in a sense, she wants her to suffer. Um, she wants her to be prosecuted to the fullest. Well, second degree felony, that's like a few years in jail. So really? Um, no, I mean, I, I don't think any judge would sentence that way, but I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's scary, folks. This is not a joke. Just cause it's like, oh, second degree. Well, it's not first degree, it can't be that bad, no. No, it's bad, it's bad. Okay, um, but I do kind of feel like, okay, even if worse comes to worse, I think it's unlikely that she would get jail time. Oh God, unless she has other, unless she has priors. Let's hope she doesn't. Okay, uh, Candace, oh, I meant to bring a prop. I'll just mime it. Candace, you have to stop with this, with the folding of the tissue to dab under your eyelashes at those non-existent fake tears. 
it's not cute. It's driving me crazy. You're doing it all the time. And I've never seen a real tear come out when you do that. You know, when we're really emotional and that, you know, me, it's my, it's my thing, my platform, fake crying. When real emotion is coming out, we don't take time to carefully fold a tissue from our purse, find the exact spot where the mascara might touch our um, eye socket and dab exactly there like this and then two seconds later be fine again no it's gross it's fake and it makes me it makes me feel less disposed less inclined to be on her side and remember where we started I was very you know disgusted with Monique and just like no no Candace didn't deserve that and again I still don't think she deserved it because it was physical violence and there's no excuse for that but wow Candace is not doing herself any favors with making herself likable I mean, neither has Monique, but anyway, okay. Um, all right, um, Candace is angry that Karen is still playing both sides. She is not willing to go all in with Team Candace saying, no, there's no excuse for what Monique did, um, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, technically if you have to take a side, you would take Candace's side because Monique was violent. Um, all right. Back to Wendy and Eddie and little baby Cameron. Um, so Eddie does want to invite his family. Uh, Carter, his son, was asking about his grandpa. He was touching daddy's beard and he was saying, does grandpa have a beard like that? Because he's never met his grandfather. That's really sad. Um, so he is gonna reach out and, uh, and invite the family through mom. Okay. Um, Ashley takes baby Dean to see her uncle Rodney. That is her mother's brother. And Rodney, they call him Lump, Uncle Lump. I'm gonna call him Rodney. I wouldn't wanna be called Uncle Lump, but anyway. Uh, he's a really sweet guy who's always been there for Ash. She always tells him her problems and he's just a good listener and he's just an all around sound guy. Um, and Ashley's mom comes over too. So, um, Ashley tells us a little bit more about what was going on with Michael's childhood because I'm like at the therapist uh, tell us what what do you mean that he was you know put all of his kind of energy into Michael but then that could turn ugly I had an idea and my idea was correct um, Michael's dad was a mean drunk he was a person who when he was not drinking thought Michael was the greatest thing in the world and gave him all the love in the world. And then as he started drinking, he would get meaner and meaner. And finally would come the time where he would come bursting in the room for no reason and start verbally assaulting um, Michael. And that was my uh, growing up, my childhood from about the age of seven to the age of 16. So, um, I sincerely, um, I sincerely understand how painful it is to be consistently verbally abused by a mean, drunken man. In this case, um, my mom's uh, long-term partner after my father had died. And um, it, it's like it takes a little bit out of you, then it takes a little bit more, then it takes a little bit more, and you have to be incredibly strong and you literally have to like stare in the mirror and say, what he said is not true. People do love me. I'm smart. I'm beautiful. You have to literally talk yourself up. Um, and hopefully you have some other people in your life to do that too. But if you don't, you got to do it to yourself. Otherwise, you're going to end up with all kinds of problems. I, I still didn't escape, you know, some of the issues, but, um, but it never made me cheat. But you know what? You can't judge because everyone's reaction is different. Some people might turn to drinking. Some people might turn to, uh, you know, to drugs. Some people might themselves become violent or enraged. You know, everyone, everyone's different. Everyone's different. Um, I got, among other things, a raging case of OCD <laughs> wanting to control my world. Um, but I'm happy to say the control freak has controlled her OCD. Um, it took many, many years, but probably by the time I was 40, so like 20 years ago, I was starting to really get a handle on that. And it only took like 25 years of work. <laughs> but you can overcome anything, I'm telling you. Okay, anyway, so um, 
the Uncle Lump, sorry, I said I was going to call him Uncle Rodney. Uncle Rodney and mom just want to make sure that she's tough with Michael, that she's not being soft on him. That's everyone's concern. And again, she keeps saying, no, if he does it again, I'm out of here. She's not going to be that way. Um, Rodney says he wants to see Michael. Mom wants to see him too. They want to have a little talk with him about what happened. Okay. Um, now we go to the sip and see, which is held in a little kind of a... a a small town art gallery and um, and uh, it's a kind of a lovely round space with open beam ceilings it's perfect to just basically you know decorate however you want and it's all pink for the baby and there's kind of a throne for the mom and baby to sit on and all that and um, Robin who is always late if you watch Potomac, you know Robin is always late. She actually gets there on time for once, and oh, guess what? Everyone's on Nigerian time, so they get there two, two hours later. So she's really early and sitting there alone for a long time. So she's like, well, this is what I get for finally being on time. Um, she's wearing that short pink coat dress that... Um, I know you guys will correct me immediately because I haven't had time since I wrote this to go back and check. I want to say it was worn by Lisa, Rena, and Gabrielle at the same party. It was, I think, it was at Kyle's house, at Kyle's party. Um, or was it, was it Lisa and Erica Jane, or was it Erica Jane and Gabrielle? Those three are in my head. So two of those three were wearing, I th I'm pretty sure it's the same coat dress. It's very cute. It looks really cute. Um, in honor of Cameron, Wendy asked all the ladies to wear pink, and they all look very good in pink. Um, okay. Wendy reads actually on the way to the sip and see that Monique was charged with second degree assault. Uh, probable cause was found, so the charges are being filed. Uh, Giselle walks in wearing a painter's drop cloth that has been conveniently dyed pink for the party. I understand the sort of one-shouldered, drapey, blousey look, but this one is like 10 sizes too big. I don't know. It's a beautiful color on her. It makes her skin look lovely. Um, she's beautiful, but I mean, it's not like a horrible, totally mm, fashion choice like Giselle sometimes makes. It's just kind of frumpy. And Giselle's never frumpy. That's, that's unusual. Okay. Candace arrives and she's all cheery. How inappropriate. She should not arrive all, hi, I'm on top of the world. La la. You know, like, sound of music, happy. No. I mean, she doesn't have to come in being like, hi, everyone. No, that would be stupid too. But coming in that over the top cheerful when she knows that everyone has just read on their social media about the charges is weird. I don't like it at all. Again, Candace is going, mm -mm -mm in my estimation, and it's only going to get worse. Okay. Um, uh, you know, Karen and Ashley, who are the most kind of understanding of Monique's side, let's say, um, are not impressed by the charges. <laughs> uh, okay, Wendy, um, getting to the actual sip and see, she calls up women to um, introduce them and say that these are the kind of women that she would like Cameron to grow up to be, which is lovely, really lovely. I'm sorry, these spaghetti straps are like, mm, I'll be going like this, which is almost as annoying as someone pulling up their strapless bra. I could be doing that too, but I won't. Um, okay, uh, so she calls up her mother, of course, very strong woman. Not sure what she's wearing, but I love the mom. She's just all charisma. Mom is pure charisma. She's definitely some kind of Nigerian, you know, queen. Uh, and then she also calls up Yvonne, her sister, who's who we met before, who's the surgeon. And um, yeah, that's, that's good choices to inspire little Cameron, even though she's only a few months old. I think it's cute. It's nice. Okay, um, Giselle's like, I want to be Nigerian. Oh yeah, so do I. I mean, well, actually Indian's good and I get to do Indian all the time. I get to go to Indian events, parties, anniversary parties, weddings, kids' birthdays, you know, engagement parties, all those things all the time. So I'm not complaining. I think I've told you half my wardrobe is Indian and that's some great stuff. Colorful, crazy, saris, lingas, you know, just, yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. I, I've always loved to play dress up and 
and my um, all my wonderful friends in India and the time I spend there um, allows me to do so. But oh, I love the African stuff too. I love, 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 love those West African cultures, the different fabrics, the, the different patterns and um, you know, the way they, they do the head wraps. Oh, it's, it's amazing, it's gorgeous. I'm the women all look like queens. Okay, um, all right, at dinner, Giselle, of course, <laughs> being messy, is the first one to ask uh, Candace about the charges. And um, the question is asked, is the goal for her to go to jail? Because she could go to jail. And Candace is basically like, yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. Mm. Yeah, no one should want Monique to go to jail. She's got all those kids. Are you really thinking what that means? I mean, no. No, no, we don't want mommy to go to jail. And, you know, no, yeah, no one went, I don't know, like I said, I feel funny saying this, no one went to the hospital. It, it was wrong what she did, but there are lesser charges you could have given her that would have given her a little swat on the backside without this. Now this is scary. She has to go through something scary here. Okay, um, yeah, no one, no, nobody wants Monique to go to jail. Um, but Candace and her mom want there to be consequences. Okay, but consequences? I mean, you want her to spend a year in the joint? No. Okay. Um, all right. Remember, all of this mess that resulted in the charges escalated from a yelling match. Um, that in itself, I think, doesn't make it a good example of second-degree assault that would warrant a jail sentence because there was a lot of kind of, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's pushing it. Um, Candace is really nasty when Ashley speaks her mind, and Candace, Candace just goes off on Ashley. She does it again. She will never learn just to tamp down that inner bitch. It just comes out, and she's like a pit bull, and she's like, oh, because you're being paid. Like Monique's, like Monique and Chris are paying her to say positive things about Monique. And Ashley's like, no, I have my own money, thank you, you know? And um, Candace has to say something like, well, you're not gonna be married for long. Like the source of your money is, you know, um, Michael, and you're not gonna be married for long. N you know, just like she knows something. She doesn't know anything. She's just being as nasty as, and, and low as she possibly can, as shady as she possibly can. You know, even Chris, I mean, Chris, oh my God, he, it's such a challenge. It must be such a challenge to be married to her. He tells her, shut up, stop it now. He knows how she looks. Chris sees you. Um, and this is how she instigates and she kind of sucks, especially when she acts like this. Um, in the meanwhile, Eddie is sad that his family has not shown up to the event, even though he sent a text message to his mother and invited her and asked her to invite the rest of the family, and nobody came. And I, I do feel bad that Eddie's family doesn't come. He, uh, he looks really disappointed, but it was a beautiful event. And um, that's it for another episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. So um, I'm so happy that you have joined me, and um, please remember to like, um, you would do me a very great honor if you would push the red subscribe button and you can ring the bell. I'll send you updates when I make new uploads. Um, I am uh, thinking of doing something a little different. I have a lot of really uh, juicy, interesting, um, mostly 20th century and 21st century Indian murder mysteries where women are the killers. Um, and these are, you know, kind of like um, in the in the cities and, you know, the upscale women of India, sort of like the real murderous housewives of Mumbai and the real murderous housewives of Delhi. Let me know if that's something that would interest you because, um, yeah, there's some amazingly juicy cases going back uh, from one that's very recent and um, going back, you know, 100 years. And woof, talk about soap operas. These are amazing. Um, there's a tradition in Indian culture of uh, the goddess. In fact, right now it's the festival of the goddess Durga, who is uh, the, the power of 
the goddess in Indian culture and in Indian religion and Hindu religion. And um, this is celebrating her different forms of, of goddess Shakti, of energy or power. And um, let me tell you, there's a little bit of that in a lot of Indian women. I'm not just talking about murder. I'm talking about it in mostly in positive ways. But if that's something that would interest you, will you do me a favor and will you write in the comments that you would be up for that? I think I'm going to go ahead and float one as a trial and see... Um, you know, see if it gets interest, because that would be a little fun for me. And there are going to be times during the year when there are fewer shows, even though, yes, the Housewives always continues. And yes, you know, the 90 Day Fiance uh, franchise, which I cover in Intelligent Reality Recaps um, on that channel, is always doing something. But some of the shows are so silly that I don't, I choose not to cover them. So I would like to have another uh, forum. And uh, then I could also show you some of my Indian wardrobe. Because of course, in order to tell the story, I would have to get in the mood. So anyway. All right. Once again, thank you so much. I love it when you join me. Thank you so much for um, for your comments. I love them. I love the engagement. I want you to take really good care of yourself. I want you to be good, but not too good. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you.